so there's this saying, and uh, that saying is, what you win them with, you win them to. And concerning, you know, the Bible and our Lord, and how we deal with um, both baby Christians and also unbelievers, you know, in, in, in hopes that, um, you know, they'll get saved, that they would believe the gospel. Um, we want to win them with the gospel, and that should be pretty obvious. But for some reason, it isn't. Um, where it's gotten to a point where... And I, let me give you an example, okay? And this happens semi-regularly. I'll knock on somebody's door. Kind of tell them what church I go to. And they might ask me something, you know, what do you have for the kids? <laughs> I say something like, well, the Bible. We preach the Bible. <laughs> you know, and it's almost like they get offended that we don't have all these, like, you know, other activities for the kids or something. And um, it's because a lot of those people grew up in a church where, where Jesus wasn't the focus, right? And, um, you know, children's church is a real weird thing, too, because, you know, in, in, in the Bible, everybody was together. They weren't separated. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, suffered the little children. You know, they, you know, they would, you know, come on to Jesus so that they would, they would hear the gospel, and, um, you know, there's a lot of children's churches where they, they dumb down the preaching to where it's like a pep talk and then they give them, you know, Kool-Aid or something or some candy and they kind of just hype them up on sugar and, uh, you know, and then they have like a teen church or, or, you know, and then they'll have like a young adults or something. And then by the time those kids are older, they've been hearing a bunch of watered down garbage that, you know, when they get older and they can choose the church they go to, they'll, they'll go to like the most liberal church in town that has, you know, all sorts of activities. And... Because they were never grounded on the fact that, you know, you should go to church to to hear the gospel and also grow in the faith and knowledge of your identity in Jesus Christ. And a lot of pastors now grew up going to these watered-down children's churches instead of being in the main service. And now these pastors are adults. And now, you know, because they grew up not having an attention span and also thinking that that was just church where you would just have activities or whatever and not preach the Bible. Um, they're pastors now and their, their understanding is that, you know, you got to entertain people and you got to draw people in with the lusts of their flesh to keep them in in. in that's horrible, okay? And that's how the world thinks. And um, another thing, uh, Brother Greg Jackson did a wonderful video yesterday where he talked about how, you know, pastors need to do their job. Um, <laughs> I guess he got some flag for that, which is kind of hilarious. But, because, um, yeah, it should be so obvious. Yeah, pastors should preach the gospel. But, uh, Another thing I want to say regarding that, though, is that most pastors 
they need to get saved because most pastors aren't even saved. Okay, because a lot of these guys, you know, they never really heard the gospel growing up because they went to some watered down church that used an NIV and drew them in with uh, Kool Aid in, in, you know, an amusement park or something, field trips, instead of preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Um, and you know, that could be a a video all by itself about how, you know, most pastors just need to get saved. And then also after they get saved, they need, they need to just step down from being a pastor. Cause if you just got saved like two minutes ago, you shouldn't pastor a church. That's ridiculous. Um, And, you know, a lot of people, they'll pick the fanciest church in town because of the lust of their eyes, you know, and and they, for example, I remember seeing a video of Joel Osteen's cult and people were asking, this guy was like asking people, like, why do you go to Joel Osteen's church? And there was one guy talking about how, like, Look how big it is. I mean, if Jesus is coming back, he he must be coming here. This this is where all the action's at, man. And, and that guy, you think somebody like that is gonna sit down and listen to a sermon about justification and imputed righteousness? For an hour or something, you know th- that guy. <laughs> they go to church because it's like a social club, and there's like activities and stuff, and even churches now have like uh, they like have their own you know, these mega churches, they, they serve their own coffee. I've heard some mega churches, you know, you, you could tithe on a credit card and all this crazy stuff. And, um, and also a lot of these mega churches, they suck people in again on emotionalism where they want them to have a religious experience, um, to where the, 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 the people basically, you know, have, a bunch of dopamine chemicals activated in their brain so they feel really good and, and then they feel like God would met with them because they had some religious experience. And um, a lot of times all it is is just, you know, singing and swaling and, and just re- repeating, you know, one lines of, of, of terrible songs. with no doctrine but it's just like the same stanza over and over again and it's it's almost like a seance <laughs> and you know a lot of churches like they, they even try to hide what they really believe like most churches, you actually have to do some digging to find out what the uh, pastor there actually believes. Um, because a lot of pastors at the bigger churches, they don't they don't want to be caught, you know, with a statement of faith because, um, you know, net naturally if you have a statement of faith if you if you have a you know for example if, you, if if you believe the gospel and then you preach the gospel to a crowd of people you know most people in that crowd are going to get offended the vast majority of the time and then once you start preaching other doctrines like uh you know that 
this whole oh you gotta speak in tongues or you're not really saved. You know if you just preach what a bu- that that's a bunch of garbage, and you show them what the Bible actually says, well all these charismatic types are gonna get really offended and leave, and then, um, you know you you lose potential you know tithers, and that that's pretty much what most church is like nowadays where you know maybe there's like a Mr. Moneybags at the church and um, a pastor doesn't want to preach something that might offend Mr. Moneybags um, because you know the staff that decided to take out a, a million dollar loan on a church building which God never told them to do. And they just got to pay that loan back so they can't scare off Mr. Moneybags. And Mr. Moneybags, you know, might be one of those holy roller Pentecostal types and you can't tell them that, you know, barking like a dog and and, 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 and calling it, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is, is retarded. Okay? Because Mr. Moneybags is going to get offended and, and leave with his money bags. <laughs> um, you know, some churches are really big on the choir and music and stuff. And, you know, so, so, some hymns are good. You know, I prefer the older hymns. Most of the, the newer music is, you know doesn't have much doctrine and just corny and stuff a lot of it's kind of like some weird like bedroom kind of music like like jesus is is your boyfriend it's it's weird okay some some of these newer songs um but you know so, so some people and some pastors and, and, and staff of, of churches, they'll, they'll make music like the main thing. Okay. And then people go to that church expecting to hear a bunch of music and like no gospel. Or somebody would, would go to a church, you know, wanting to see a bunch of people act the fool. That's called the Pentecostal church. Okay. It's called the, so-called church of god um which it's not god's church okay <laughs> it's a bunch of people you know getting possessed by devils and just acting a fool and preaching damnable heresy but some people want to see a show like that where, you know, people crawl around on the floor and bark like a dog and run aisles and stuff. And, you know, if here's another thing, too. OK. Some people just will not go to a church that doesn't have what they call hard preaching. Okay. If the pastor's not yelling all the time, some people are going to just think he's like weak or something. And they're just going to go to another church and they're going to find the guy that yells the loudest in town. Or they're going to go to another town and just hear the guy rip some fives. And that's emotionalism. Okay. That's another example of emotionalism. And, you know, I've, I've met people that listen to guys like Steven Anderson. And quite a few times I've heard them tell me that, you know, Steven Anderson ruined preaching for me. And what they meant by that is that because Steven Anderson kind of does these crazy things while he preaches like jumping on a pulpit and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, praying for people to die. You know, that's what they were attracted to. 
So that becomes like almost like their drug. Where that's what they go to church for. They don't go to church to hear about, you know, the the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, they go to church to hear some guy rip some face or, you know, to, to hear this music or the social club or the children's church of activities. And so, some parents honestly just, and this is pretty sad, but some parents just, you know, go go to church to like dr ha have their their kids babysat for a while because there's a children's church and that, that's just a fact okay but there are some parents like that unfortunately and look if if the gospel isn't enough and if bible preaching isn't enough for somebody to stay at church then they don't belong there, okay? God builds the church, not you. And honestly, some people just don't belong in church. <laughs> but uh, a lot of churches, you know, they're just the biggest thoughts of money and the you know the love of money is the root of all evil and they'll start corrupting doctrine and compromising on on the gospel things like that that's if they even knew the gospel because again most pastors aren't even saved okay most of these bible colleges are or heretic factories okay and uh also of course there's the uh Catholic infiltration trying to bring, you know, everyone back to, to their false doctrines. But anyways, that's it for this video. And uh, remember that, that Jesus Christ is our life. And let us not put emotionalism and, you know, face ripping or you know, activities or whatever ahead of God. Um, Jesus Christ is our supply. Our supply uh, isn't a fancy building or, you know, the, the high social status at the rich people's country club kind of church. Our value is in Jesus Christ. Take care.